Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Artbeat Studios. Artbeat specializes in printing high quality metal, canvas, and acrylic prints. Make sure to check out the link down in the description if you're a photographer that wants to print your work. What is up guys? You might be able to tell I'm in this absolutely stunning slot canyon here in Southern Utah doing a little photography. Wanted to make a full tutorial for you guys on a total field to print. I know I'm gonna print this image. I really like the way that it looks right now. Um, and so I wanted to make a video talking about some things that I'm thinking through when I'm doing that. So I wanna show you guys what I'm looking at here. I'll go ahead and take a photo just so you can kind of see what we're looking at. Um, essentially, we've got this beautiful, beautiful little arch that's going on right here. Um, and this scene has a lot of depth in it. You know, I've got these rocks that are really close to me on my right and my left, and then I've got rocks that are further back. So you always wanna make sure, but especially when you are out here printing your images, that everything is sharp. Really important to hit your focus point and to focus on multiple spots in your particular image. So now for this image in particular, you can see maybe that I've zoomed in a little bit. I'm gonna kind of show you guys some different crops here. Activate the video mode on my other camera here. Now at the absolute widest view, it looks like this. Now I'm actually zooming in a little bit. I don't really like that hot spot right on the top of my frame. So I'm actually zooming in a little bit. I'm at about 22 millimeters. I'm using um, a Tamron 17 to 28 with my Sony a7R4. Like I said, zoomed into about 22 millimeters. Now it's crucial here that I, A, I wanna properly expose this ISO 100. You can see I've got my tripod in this slot canyon because the it's really dark in here. So I'm at 1 4th of a second F11 um, in ISO 100. F11 feels like a great place to be because it allows me to capture this particular scene and have a lot in focus. Now, a lot of people might think, why wouldn't you just go F22? If I go F22, I'm gonna lose a lot of image quality and sharpness, which is something I don't wanna do because I'm gonna be printing this photo. So F11 is a good spot that's still relatively sharp, but has a lot in focus. And additionally, I'm going to focus stack. On this particular photo, I'm gonna do three separate points for my focus stack, which I'm doing right now. You can see I've got one in the background where I'm focusing right here in the middle. I've got another kind of mid ground where I'm focusing right here. And then I have one last kind of foreground that is gonna be either on the left or on the right side here. And as it gets darker in here, as the evening goes on, I'm shooting this in the evening, um, I'm gonna wanna open up that exposure just a hair and allow more brightness in because I wanna get minimal noise. Now, of course, there's lots of noise reduction softwares out there. If you have a little bit of noise, not a big deal. You can get rid of it, but I do wanna make sure to totally get rid of that as much as I possibly can um, because I'm gonna be printing this image. So I like to try and do a few different compositions here. Uh, I like to zoom out, zoom in, do vertical, whatever, do the whole nine yards um, and make sure that I ultimately have a ton of shots because when you're gonna print something, last thing you wanna do is take one image, go home and find out that your photo is not sharp. So taking lots of images here. Um, and again, I I'm just about ready to maybe zoom out, take a few more images. I know I said I didn't like that brighter spot up above, um, but I might just zoom out, take a couple shots anyways, because I might use something else from that particular crop. Um, and I wanna just have as much data as I can so that when I go home, I can really make some adjustments as I see fit and have a really great image when I'm printing. Now, of course, you don't wanna blow anything out, especially because you're printing this image. Uh, it really looks awful when you print something where you've got overexposed highlights. I wanna be careful with the sand down here. Another thing in a slot canyon that I'm keeping in mind, um, and I went ahead and went down and I smoothed out the sand down there. It's really hard to get rid of footprints in the sand. I actually came up from down below where um, my scene is at. So I wanna make sure I get rid of all of those. So you just use like a shirt or something to smooth that out a little bit. It's not necessarily uh, something you have to do, but it is something that's gonna help you to get a little bit better photo in my opinion. Opinion. So I've captured a lot by now. I've already captured some before I started this video. So I think I'm feeling pretty happy about what I got in the field. So next section of this video, we're gonna jump to the editing of this photo. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I edited it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how I prepared it for print, how I sent it off. And then of course the big old print at the end is gonna look amazing. So let's go ahead and jump right over to the computer section. So now that I'm back at home, I wanted to show you guys how I edited this photo. I'm not gonna be walking you through exactly how I did each and every step. That would take a really long time because I actually spent a substantial amount of time doing some fixes on certain things on this image. But I'm just gonna walk you through all my layers in Photoshop and tell you exactly what I did, just so you can get a rough idea of what kind of processing goes into to a photo like this. 
So I started out, you can see here, I have two different photos here. Uh, these are just the focus stack. I only ended up needing two of the focus stacks. Um, and so I used a layer mask here to just blend in the right and the left side in the foreground to make sure everything was sharp. Again, that's really important when I have a print that I've got a whole image that is sharp. So use the focus stack there. Then I ended up going with a warp here because I wanted to get rid of this bright spot and this oversaturated spot. Um, I could have maybe done some processing to fix that, but it just saved me a ton of time to be able to just get rid of that. And then it also made the arch like slightly taller and skinnier, which is what I remembered it looking like in person instead of this like kind of wide angle distortion, this like shorter, fatter arch. So I ended up just doing a little slight warp there. I also pulled out the sides of the king in a little bit to kind of accentuate the leading line. So really, really minor warp there. Um, then I turned it into a smart object and I did some Nick color effects, um, effects basically. And then um, I did a camera off filter and just kind of fixed up the image to get it to a more workable state. Now, after this, I jumped in and I made a couple of hue saturation masks. Now I did this in order to essentially try and neutralize the colors. You'll see when I toggle this, it really neutralizes this hot spot right here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn those off again. Essentially when I make this mask here, um, I create a color mask. So it selects the colors in the image um, and your selection is going to make the strongest selection of the most saturated colors, which is exactly, oops, exactly what we want to do because uh, we want to kind of neutralize the saturation so that right here isn't so much more saturated than everywhere else in the image. So I neutralized that a little bit just to get it to a more workable state. And you're probably thinking this image is way desaturated. Don't worry. Uh, we start to work a little bit back in right here. You can see I just added plus 23 here. And I actually inverted the saturation mask that I used down here and then added some saturation back into the rest of the scene. Now I went through and I did a color balance adjustment here. I cooled this image down, tinted it green and red. You can see this is what we ended up with. Next, I used a color layer on 50% opacity with a mask here just to kind of make it a little more orange because I was feeling like this, there was like some purples, magentas down here, you know, like some blues up here and some of the darker spots. So I just kind of tried to synergize everything a little bit by so that's simply just using a blank layer on color blend mode and then just painting with a brush in the spots that you want to add the color to and dropping the opacity to 50 percent and then using a layer mask to paint it out of some spots that it came in a little strong next i did my usual curve here which really is where you start to see the image kind of uh, turn the corner so i did the s curve here and i dragged up on the blacks on the very bottom if you guys have watched any of my recent videos uh, you probably heard me talk about that because i talk about it a lot um, next i added another curves layer this one i just darkened but i used a luminosity mask so i just darkened the brightest areas in the scene you can see i was feeling like it was a little hot right here where the light was hitting so just darken that ever so slightly really small change Next, I made a color balance adjustment. Um, I went ahead and added some greens and dropped the reds just because I felt like the image was too red. I wanted to neutralize it a little bit. So I was pretty happy with that. Then I made a hue saturation adjustment. Um, I added plus 24 saturation just overall to the whole image to kind of bring some life back into it. It's looking pretty good. And I went ahead and I merged all visible into one layer here. And then I did some HSL adjustments um, in the camera raw filter up here. Um, and I ended up with this. So I was just trying to kind of um, bring those oranges and reds a little bit more together. Then I went in with a hue and saturation and I dropped the magentas. You can see there's like some really strong magenta spots after I made that HSL adjustment. So I just dropped some of those a little bit. I went in next with a curve and I brightened the um, dark areas here. So you can see when I turn that on, just kind of added a little more dynamic range to the scene. And then I went ahead and just created an S curve on the midtones here. Doing a little bit of midtone contrast, gives it just a little bit of pop. 
Now we're getting close to being finished here at the end of my edit. Um, I added a little pop filter, which I have a few videos on YouTube on covering how to use the unsharp mask to kind of give it a little bit of a punch. And we'll zoom in so we can actually see this a little bit better here. We've got before and then after, before and after. You can see there's like a little bit of micro contrast in here, before and after. So it just adds a little bit of micro contrast. Next, I added a vignette. I like to zoom out when I look at that. And you can see the vignette. Basically, we're darkening the edges here and up here, as well as the top. And I'm also brightening the center. Oops, the vignette. We're brightening the center here. So we're bringing attention to the center of the frame. Really, really important. Next, I've got a curves and I darkened the very brightest areas again. You can see I used a luminosity mask, really, really selective selection, if that's a word. Um, and I just darkened those just a hair because they was a little hot. Um, then I went in with a hue and saturation here and I just dropped the saturation of this down here. I felt like the orange was a little bit too strong. So you can see before and after fix that up down there. Then I did a little bit of spot healing. You can see I spot healed some of the like scuff marks or bird marks or whatever. I also got rid of this green. I really didn't like that green there. It was really distracting to the scene. And then I also kind of touched up this area down here that, you know, I said I smoothed a little bit, um, but there was still some imperfections in there. So I just kind of made that even smoother by doing a little spot heal. And doing that, I just used um, the little band-aid tool here, which is called the spot healing brush. I always forget the name. I just call it the band-aid tool. Um, so then we've got an exposure adjustment. I increased the exposure by about half of a stop just to make things a little bit brighter. And then I went in finally with the hue saturation and I dropped the saturation of the reds. You can see I dropped the saturation and the lightness of the reds. That's mostly affecting over here in the scene. Now, this is basically my final image here that we're gonna send off to the printer. But to print it as a triptych, we need to do a quick little cut here to cut it into thirds. Now, what I would normally do is save this image, which I've already done. So you save this image and then I would like reopen it or just create a copy or whatever in order to create my triptych because I need to create it in three pieces. But once you have opened a copy, make sure you open a copy and that you don't do it on your original image. You would go in here and I'm just gonna merge all the layers by selecting them all, holding shift, I'm going to hit command E, which is going to close all these down into one layer. It's just going to make my Photoshop run a heck of a lot faster. Um, and then I can go ahead and cut this into thirds. So I want to go in to, um, let's go down to settings and units and rulers. I want to change this to inches. I'm going to hit OK. Now I want to turn this into essentially a 60 by 90 triptych, which is going to be three 30 by 60 pieces. So to do that, I need the whole print to be 90 wide in total. Now you can do this in Photoshop. I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop. Generally, I use on one resize. I like it a little bit better than Photoshop. I think it does a little bit better job, but uh, I know a lot of you guys probably don't have it. So I will just show you how to do it here in Photoshop. Now we're gonna go to image. We're gonna go down to image size. We're gonna adjust this. We want the width to be 90. The height is basically 60. We'll uncheck the lock there and turn it to 60. Resolution is gonna be 150 pixels an inch for a print. Resample, we're gonna change this to the bicubic smoother. And we're gonna hit okay. Now it might take a second to load out depending on the speed of your computer. Once that loads out though, if you have the ruler up, you should see it's 90 wide by 60 tall. If you don't have the ruler, you're gonna go ahead and hit Command R or Control R on a PC, and that's gonna bring up the ruler for you. Now we can just go in there and I'm going to create guides. I'm gonna zoom in to about the 30 mark so that I can create this a little more precisely. I'm gonna click and drag out from the ruler and I'm gonna drop this right on 30. I'm gonna do the same thing on 60. And to zoom in here, one little trick that you guys may or may not be aware of, hold the space bar and command and then click and drag to the right to zoom in or to the left to zoom out. It's a really nice trick to be able to zoom in exactly where your mouse is. We'll drag this out to 60. And because again, we want three 30 inch pieces. 
Now at this point, I'm gonna look at this image and double check and make sure this is actually gonna look good as a triptych. You know, you wanna make sure that um, nothing important is being cut off. So like if my arch was being cut off right here on this right third, I wouldn't wanna print it as a triptych, but I think it's gonna look great the way it is. You can see the centerpiece is gonna be just perfect because uh, it has that whole arch in it. Now that you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and grab the crop tool. You can try and find it over here or you can just push C. You wanna make sure you clear if there's uh, numbers up here. You wanna make sure you, a lot of times it'll say like three by two and then when you adjust, it'll snap to those proportions. Make sure you hit clear, uh, turn off, delete crop pixels and just drag this over. Make sure it says W is 30, at least for the size that I'm doing. You wanna make sure W is the width of whatever size you are printing it on. So W is 30. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter there. Now you can see this is my left piece. You can go ahead and hit file and go ahead and save a copy. Uh, and it's important you do this and you don't export. You need to save a copy. It's gonna give you a little more uh, options to use, which is really important. If you notice that your color profile is in Pro Photo RGB, which is how I edit all my images, you do wanna convert that over usually to Adobe RGB 1998 for print. It is a slightly more constricted color gamut, but um, that's all that printers are able to print in. They can't print in Pro, Pro Photo RGB. So really important that you do that. In order to change the color space, you're gonna go to edit and you're gonna go down to convert to profile Profile is going to be Adobe RGB 1998. Hit OK. Colors in your image may change slightly. Make sure they're still OK for you um, because if they're not, you of course want to make some adjustments because this is how your image is going to be sent to the printer. For me, this still looks perfectly fine, so I'm fine with it. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go up to File. I'm going to save a copy. I'm going to change this and I'm going to change it to JPEG. I'm going to drop this. Uh, you can put it anywhere you want. I'm going to save it just to my desktop probably. And then I will go in embed color profile, uh, Adobe RGB 1998. You want to make sure it says that again. If not, go back and fix it. And then I can retitle this like left. And you'll go ahead and hit save and let that save out. I've already saved it, so I'm not going to do that. But um, then you would essentially go in, grab from the left side. You would go to 30, hit return. You would go back up after that loads out to file and you would save a copy again, do the exact same thing and then do it one more time. Make sure it's right at 30. If you're having an issue with it snapping right on 30, just zoom in, get a little bit more control when you're zoomed in here. And maybe that's too far. About right there. It keeps moving on me. Sometimes Photoshop just wants to be difficult. You may still need to zoom in. Again, you want it exactly at 30 so that your print is perfect. Hit enter once that's done. And we'll let that load out. We will essentially save these images. Uh, we'll send them off to the printer. Then we will get the print. Um, spoiler alert, I've already got the print. So I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like right now. So stoked with how this one turned out. I printed it on metal and I printed it with a satin finish at Artbeat Studios. Uh, my friends over at Artbeat did a really great job on this print. You can see just the detail in this thing is so incredible. Now satin finish might not be as popular because it's basically satin is like a semi gloss. But you can see here, even with that bright window, the glare isn't too terrible. Right now is like middle of the day when I was filming this absolute worst glare you'd ever see. So you can imagine like during the mornings and the evenings, the glare on this thing is not bad at all. You look at it the other direction, there's absolutely no glare. So hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Hopefully it was cool for you to see the whole process of in the field all the way to creating a print. As always, appreciate you guys checking it out and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me. This is Austin James Jackson. See you later.